Hello and welcome to this episode of the Blog Chronicles. I am your host, Matthew Loomis. This show is sponsored by my website, buildyourownblog.net, the full service destination for people who want to start their own WordPress blog and achieve long-term success. Today we're going to be talking about writing a book. I know this is something that many bloggers dream about. You hear all the time that everyone has a book in them and there's many people out there who want to write a book. I think that's true. Now today we're going to focus specifically on the blogger who aspires to add the term author quote unquote to their bio. Some folks start their blogs in hopes of turning their content into a book and that's definitely something you can do. There are many bloggers who want to write a book that serves their audience so they can expand their reach, boost their authority, and even make some additional cash. All of these are worthy goals and doable. I could list a ton of examples of other bloggers out there who have already done this. If you are interested in becoming a published author, be sure to keep listening, as my guest today is an expert at helping bloggers like you get a book published that is of high quality and something you would be proud to hand out to your friends and business prospects. His name is Jesse Wisniewski, and he is the VP of Marketing for Lucid Books, a company that has so far helped 136 people like you start with nothing and turn an idea into a book manuscript and then get that book published in 60 days. Jesse is also a published author himself, a blogger, and knows how to bridge the gap between a traditional publishing and self-publishing. His advice can help the aspiring author who wants the benefits of both traditional and self-publishing. Ready to become a published author? Let's get to it by adding Jesse Wisniewski to the Blog Chronicles. Hi, Jesse. Welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, you know, I think a good place to start our conversation today is with the why. Why should someone take the time to write a book? Because it can be a bit of a gamble as far as return on investment goes, especially if a book has a business purpose to it. I think most people feel like they have a book inside them, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, but many act on it, you know, they never act on it because they don't have a clear idea on why to write a book. They don't realize how a book can help them. So let's start with the why. You talk about six reasons why writing a book is beneficial to a business owner, particularly an online business owner or a blogger who wants to grow an audience. These are really compelling reasons to take the plunge. So let's go through the six reasons you wrote about on the Lucid blog, and I will provide a link to this article in the show notes. Okay, so the first benefit to writing a book is, you say, credibility. How does credibility, or how does a book help credibility? No, that's a great question, Matt. And there's a reason I started off with that one in the the post is because you know credibility in and of itself uh, makes or breaks an individual or business owner. You know, because that's just the key to success. If somebody doesn't trust who you are, what you're offering, and and what you're all about, then it's going to be difficult for someone to succeed in their field or in their business. Um, the reason I start with credibility is, you know, it's a conversation that's been going on for thousands of years. You know, Aristotle, you know, in the fourth century BC, wrote his book, The Art of Rhetoric, and within it, he mm-hmm. lays out three different modes of persuasion. The first one being logos, you know, meaning appealing to somebody's logic or with reason. So, you know, facts and stuff that we use in our uh, articles that we're writing or in the books that we're publishing. Mm-hmm. Uh, pathos, which is an appeal to someone's emotion. And then the last one was ethos, which is an appeal to the individual's personal character or credibility. So as a business owner's character or as a blogger's, you know, character and credibility. And so as a business owner, as a blogger, there are many ways you can establish your credibility, such as being an expert in your field, having Mm -hmm. personal experience with the topic you're discussing or obtaining endorsements from people, organizations, you know, take your blog, for instance, you know, somebody visits your website, what they'll notice on the homepage in the top right hand corner is featured in Inc you know, search engine people. I believe you have Forbes on there as well. Mm-hmm. And so what this allows people to, to see, this is a good move on your part because it lets visitors know who may not be familiar with you that you do know what you're talking about, that you do have reputable organizations who have vouched for you and your work. Mm-hmm. Now, what does this all have to do with writing a book? And it has everything with writing a book. So writing a book is an excellent way for anyone to establish him or herself as an expert in their field. So it quickly lets people know you are knowledgeable enough about your topic to write a book on the subject 
it proves to your reader, you know, who should be your target market or audience if you're, you know, a business or a blogger, that you know what you're doing and what you're talking about. So I'm, I believe we're going to address this a little bit later down here, but, you know, writing a book is a great way to set yourself apart in your industry. It can lead to opening of new doors for you, your work, and your business. And so that's one of the reasons or the primary reasons why I think that leading with credibility with writing a book is beneficial for business owners and bloggers. There is just something uh, kind of sexy about, you know, having an author, uh, you know, is your part of your title. You know what I mean? Like, uh, oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's, it's like, feels like you should start wearing cardigans and smoking pipes and wearing glasses without prescription lenses. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, that too. <laughs> you know, um, credibility. Yeah. So so actually just just having a book that you can hand out to people. And, and, um, I think it, I read somewhere that it, it's great because you don't have to like go into selling mode and try to tell someone that you meet that, you know, that you know what you're talking about. You can just hand them the book. No, absolutely. That's, you know, absolutely the case. So we've worked with authors before, uh, for instance, a real estate agent named Brad Beavers, he wrote a book, Texas Farm and Ranch Guide. And, you know, for him, it's a way that he can give a copy of his book to a prospect uh, or client. And that just establishes himself as a, a credible authority in that. And it also helps, you know, save him time in that he's able to basically just through the book form, let somebody know about Texas Farm and Ranch Guide and people who are interested in that. So it's a very niche topic, but it's proved out to be very helpful for him as terms of you know generating new leads for his uh, company. Hmm. Can you think of a few other off the top of your head um, niches or businesses that books really boost credibility for? Yeah, I mean, I think honestly, it really helps with you know everything. But you know, in general, the few that are coming to mind is you know if someone's a consultant, uh, you know, regardless of what are they consulting on, whether it's you know small business consultant. I mean, you could be a consultant in the in uh, energy industry. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can be a consultant, like, you know, in accounting, I mean, all sorts of things. So writing a book and having one published in your field will definitely take, you know, your work to the next level in terms of, you know, validating you as a uh, credible source on the topic that, you're, you know, sorry. And in the same case here with the real estate agent I just referred to is like, you know, you can also use that book to then send to potential prospects. Uh, you could use that book to then give to people you've worked uh, with in the past, you know, as a way of generating more word of mouth uh, interest. And then one of the things, too, it's important with the book. It's not just writing the book in and of itself. You know, it's also being, you know, selective in what you're doing. It's like if I'm writing and publishing a book as a business owner or a blogger, then I want to be sure that whatever I'm writing and publishing on mm-hmm. not only is connecting with my target market or my target audience, but is also fulfilling the objectives I have for my business and the objectives I have for my blog. You know, right. so for instance, you know, if I'm you and I'm publishing a book, like you might have an interest in writing a fiction book and you can do that by all means. You have the freedom of flexibility, but mm. you know, as a business owner, I imagine you don't have a ton of time to, you know, pursue writing endeavors. So for you, it just seems like if you were to write a book, then you would want to write one within the topic and the objectives of, you know, build your yeah. dot yeah. net. Right. When I said fiction, um, I was actually thinking of something kind of out of the box, like, mm-hmm. uh, the se- the, not the secret, the gift, I think it was called The Gift. Um, if you could come up with some sort of a story that ties into your business, do you, do you think that could work? Yeah, absolutely. We've you know seen that done you know before. Narrative is a you know powerful means of connecting with people and going back to the different modes of persuasion we're, we're talking about earlier in terms of connecting with people emotionally. So yeah, if you can find mm-hmm. ways to weave, whether it's your personal story or even create a fictional story that's based and built around um, your business is, mm-hmm. you know, tremendously beneficial as well. And we've seen that done at lucid books. We've worked with a, an author who's employed that tactic and I've been a part of other, mm-hmm. you know, books that have employed a similar strategy as well. And it's a way of just engaging people from beginning to end, um, with, you know, your business or with your blog and the topic that you're discussing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So you also say that a book can help generate leads. How does that work? Yeah. So, I mean, first and foremost, just kind of going back to what we uh, maybe jumped the gun and got onto a little earlier was that, you know, generating leads, once your book is published, then you can send physical copies, you can uh, send digital copies of your book. 
to prospects or even have them on hand after you, you know, meet initial contacts and stuff that you can provide them free or, mm. uh, you know, on your website, you can provide, you know, book downloadable for free after, you know, somebody provides their, you know, information, whatever you would need to qualify, you know, the person downloading it as a potential lead for your business. Right. Um, and I think kind of what I was getting at earlier too, that one thing important to keep in mind is, uh, maximizing or optimizing the book itself. And one of those ways is to include your contact information in the back of it. So whether you want people to reach you via phone number, physical address, website, email, mm -hmm. uh, include that information about you, your business, uh, and the additional products or services you potentially provide. And so one of the best places to put that is just in the back of the book and what's called, you know, maybe a back matter ad, which is the information that follows the, the pages of the body and the conclusion of your book. Mm -hmm. And another tactic um, that we found helpful working with authors is creating additional resources based upon the book that you're writing upon. So this could be a free mm -hmm. downloadable worksheet uh, based upon the book, maybe a discussion guide, maybe additional tools that couldn't fit within the book. But providing internal link uh, links to in your book to point back to you know a landing page or your website for people mm -hmm. to go there to download those resources free um, but maybe even with an email opt-in so that way you can you know collect their information and you can further nurture uh, those leads that you gain through the book by providing the valuable information with the downloads and then just even through like email sequences and such as that yeah so a book can be a great promotional tool which is the third uh, benefit that you list. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, once you have your book, you know, you can obviously just print physical copies and hoard them and keep them to yourself in the comfort of your own homes. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's not going to help, you know, the, you or, you know, your audience. But so, yeah, I mean, when it comes to distribution, again, kind of going back to what we were just talking about, as long as you have all your contact information in there, ways mm -hmm. to get in touch with you, links to your website and stuff that once you distribute distribute your book and make it available through a variety of channels, whether it be Amazon, physical bookstores, personal mm -hmm. websites, social media accounts, that you know, people will be able to create awareness you know, for them, their book, which will then in turn create awareness for you know, their business or for their blog or, or whatever it is they're looking to accomplish. Right, so um, you also say increased speaking engagements. How does, how does a book help you get speaking engagements? Yeah, no, this is a, a great question, and I think it's it's a it's a valid one, one for people to consider. So, if someone is interested in speaking, apart from speaking itself and getting out there and you know having speaking engagements and getting that experience, you know, writing a book, going back to the credibility part of it, is it turns into a great lead generation tool for you know if you're targeting certain speaking engagements by you know sending copies of your book to the organizers or to the events themselves. Um, which again is going back to proving your credibility on the topic you want to speak on. So mm -hmm. this kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier as well that you know if you're speaking on a particular topic and you wrote a book on that topic, then yes, yeah, send a copy of that book to people um, as a way of proving your credibility on that topic and stuff. So along with samples of your speaking and stuff as well, if you have them available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nowadays it, people can like look you up on YouTube as well and and see your speeches. You know, sometimes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if you're currently engaged in speaking, then, you know, making that uh, samples of your work available, whether it's on YouTube, your personal website, Vimeo, uh, or what have you, is a great way to, you know, generate credibility. So that way people, you know, organize, uh, organizers can, you know, see your work, see if you'd fit their event, um, and they can also see a sample of, of what you do and, the, you know, all of that. And so that's just a, you know, great way to, I guess, to leverage your speaking experiences. Yeah, that sounds good. So, how does a, a book help you develop additional products? Yeah, and this is a this is a good conversation, and one we were having with um, you know different authors and stuff. And so it just really depends upon the author. And so one of the ways for a business owner that I like to talk with them about is not looking at the book as the bottom of the funnel. And you know, in other words, don't look at don't look at publishing a book as in just generating revenue off of either a signing bonus or in royalties based upon the number of books you sell. Think of your book as maybe the top of the funnel or the middle part of the funnel in that you write a book and then the point of the book is then to uh, generate leads or sales for maybe an online video course that you produce based upon the same topic. Mm -hmm. And then that book and that video course then leads to the next step down, which you know could be your higher end services such as your you know, maybe one-on-one -on -one consulting business or 
uh, higher in products or services that you offer. And so everything is yeah. just creating, you know, that, that stair ladder. So instead of looking at the book at the bottom, take it up a few rungs, the, the ladder, the funnel in a sense, and then develop products based upon that. Or you can start with building the product and then, you know, and then writing the book off of that content. So it, it doesn't have to be either or, or one way or the other. But I think if people look at it in terms of especially business owners or bloggers or online entrepreneurs, uh, looking at it more in a holistic sense in terms of, you know, how can everything uh, as an ecosystem build off of one another and point back to, to one another. So if I've got a book, if I also provide courses and I speak or I consult or I have these you know, products and services, making sure everything is integrated and pointing back and that there is a funnel in place that, you know, somebody new to your website or listen to you speak for the first time or purchasing a product or service can then find, you know, access to those other products and services you offer. Right. And then your sixth reason, uh, and this is the, the reason that so many people are interested in is increased revenue. How, how, how can a book help someone increase their revenue? Yeah. And so as a business owner, um, going back to our example of, with the real estate agent I mentioned earlier. And so, you know, he gave a lot of, you know, books of away, but it wasn't being about him generating royalties from his book. And he gives, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of copies away every year and return on investment for him as a real estate agent is based primarily upon the new clients he obtains in the real estate industry. Um, and so, you know, as a business owner, it's more than just writing the book and getting the royalties off of the book. It's about creating multiple streams of income. So from book sales, additional clients and speaking engagements, uh, the sale of additional products. I mean, so one book in and of itself, if done well, uh, mm -hmm. you know, can break up into multiple streams of income for one business owner. And you can build a growing and thriving business just off of, you know, a book itself. I know what you're saying is um, intriguing a lot of people listening right now. So what qualifications does a person need to become a published author? No, that's, that's good. You know, and that's when we talk, you know, there's a lot of fear inherent, I think with writing because, you know, with writing in and of itself, uh, you know, even speaking personally, it's, you know, something like once you put it from, you know, the paper or from your word document or pages or Evernote, whatever you use to write with, and you give it out there for the public to critique, there's a lot of fear in that. Mm. But I think the first thing in terms of if someone's interested in writing a book is first identifying, you know, a topic that they want to write upon. And again, going back to if you're a business owner or a blogger and you want to write a book that will benefit either your business or your blog, then ensure that the topic of your book then fits well with the topic of your business and the topic of your blog. And so I think that's the first step is identifying your topic. Gotcha. Um, the second thing would oh, be... Okay. Right. So you're talking about how to go about doing it. Mm, yeah. Um, and, and we'll definitely get to that here in a shortly, but, um, but yeah, so I think with the qualifications of a writer, the first one is they just have to have that desire to okay. write. Okay. And if they have that interest and desire to write, then express that desire of your heart and, and write. But, right. you know, understanding too, as you're getting into that process, it's, you know, easier said than done, um, for a lot of people. And so unless you're experienced doing it, it's always beneficial to have a team of people, whether that's, you know, family and friends or professionals, you know, personally to help you out with that process. Mm -hmm. Um, or if you work with, you know, publishing company to help you to write, to publish, you know, and to promote your book. Okay. So they don't need uh, any certain degrees or any training beforehand. No, absolutely not. You know, just even speaking for myself, uh, you know, in my experience has been, you know, not, I guess, normal in the sense of, of writing and having a book published is that, you know, I failed uh, English in high school. I had to take remedial English course in college. I had mm -hmm. to take a remedial writing course in graduate school. But over the years from, you know, it's really graduate school, once I started having to write a tremendous amount of research papers and then I, you know, got into blogging and to doing other things, over a course of a period of time, I realized like I ended up picking up the craft. So the mm. craft of writing is something that you don't have to, you know, go to school to obtain a degree on. The craft of writing is something anyone can pick up and learn as it would be a craft of woodworking or, you know, the craft or art of, you know, building a website. You know, you could take classes and things to help enhance um, your skill set, but you don't right. actually have to go through this, you know, 10 step process from, you know, acing all of your classes. 
or, you know, going and get a particular degree in, you know, college or, mm-hmm. or certificate or anything. Those are helpful and beneficial, and I don't want to undermine the value of those, but those definitely are not a required prerequisite to, you know, to write and to publish a book. That's fantastic. Now, are we talking about self-publishing or traditional publishing or a combination of the two? Yeah, no, that's, so yeah, there's, there's three big, you know, ways to publish a book today. Typically, the first two that come to mind is traditionally published or self-publishing a book. Um, and then the model that we at Lucid Books employ is what is called hybrid publishing or what we like to call partnership publishing. And for us, we look to blend the best elements of traditional and self-publishing together. So like self-publishing, the hybrid model that we employ is similar in two ways. One is that, you know, there is a publishing fee that authors do pay to publish their book. Um, But then also as a self-publisher, once the manuscript is completed, we have the capability of turning and publishing a book around in 60 days or less. And so we've worked with, you know, authors before who might have a particular time frame that they want to hit in terms of, hey, I need a book, you know, my book published in the next, you know, three, six, you know, months or whatever it is. And so that's when we work, you know, partner well with those type of authors who have a particular window of opportunity they're looking for. Because in a traditional publishing sense where you're going through an agent and you're looking to get picked up by a publishing house, it could still be 12 to 18 months or more after your book is accepted before it's even published. Hmm. So mm-hmm. if an author has a particular time frame or window that they're working with, then you know we work with well with those authors. Now, the similarities that we have with traditional publishing is that we don't require someone to have an agent, but we also are, um, are selective in what we do publish. So we want to really partner with people and his or her message. And so when we work with authors, whether it's through word of mouth or someone submitting an application uh, online or through different means, then we go to great lengths to get to know, you know, the author. We want to get uh, behind their message and see what the motivation is. And, you know, and really to work with is this, you know, someone in a message that we can really get behind and partner. Mm-hmm. And so we are selective in the editorial process, unlike mm-hmm. self-publishing companies who uh, will publish, you know, books that are, that are submitted just in general. And so whereas we look to really partner and increase, you know, the quality um, and go after high-level authors who are really believe in, you know, the work that they're doing and the message that they want to share with the world. Got it. Sounds good. So if someone has been blogging for a while, can they, like, take a bunch of their blog posts over time and, and make a book out of it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, blogging, you know, before you write a book is a great, you know, for many reasons. You know, it helps, you know, people practice writing. Uh, for bloggers, it enables them to build an audience around their topic. Uh, it helps them flesh out ideas, see if they're viable, see what people are resonating with or not, um, and more. And so a lot of people are hesitant to do that be- in some ways because they're thinking, well, if I give all away my content for free online, then no one will end up buying the book. And that's you know, not really the case. You know, I think if, if you look at chefs who give away all the you know, ingredients and how they actually cook, you know, and prepare their recipes, then mm-hmm. you know, people still go out and buy his or her, you know, cookbook because they want, you know, that extra touch and stuff or whatever that could be, or they want to have that on hand. So that way they don't have to go and look around online or, or find stuff, you know, in a file and all, um, you know, and blogging also before writing a book has, you know, paved the way for countless authors, you know, today. Hmm. Uh, and so you've seen that to be the case and mm-hmm. rather, Authors are, you know, blogging extensively before publishing a book, building audience. Um, mm-hmm. Publishers can see that. And so there's basically people who are in place that are interested in you, what you have to say, and will be more compelled and interested in purchasing, you know, that in a book form. Right. Now, in regards to the second part of the question, um, you know, blogging is a great way to help you publish a book. Um, so there are many authors who write blog posts, expand them into eBooks, and then maybe expand them more into physical books or, you know, even online courses. Mm-hmm. And so that's one kind of way to go about it. Um, there's another way, a method that I found successful is for people to consider is like if they have a topic of a book and they have a general idea of what that outline is, mm-hmm. that they can then write individual blog posts um, that could be sections or maybe even chapters of the book, depending upon the link that uh, they were wanting to write upon. And then to write that out over a course of weeks or months mm-hmm. and then take that content, you know, have it edited, maybe even expand it. And then you can just easily turn that into, you know, an ebook. And that's mm-hmm. something I personally did on my website is, you know, I wrote a uh, blog post on a particular topic that I already had outlined beforehand and then turned them into, you know, an ebook to give away and expanded it, you know, some for 
for that purpose and um, you know worked with other people and, and doing that as well and so that's one way to go about it or if you're wanting to expand your material is you write your blog posts you put them together and then you just kind of build off of that when you're wanting to turn it into you know maybe a more extensive like trade book Yeah, this all sounds so promising. Uh, if if someone is excited now after listening to you talk about this, and um, is interested in getting started, um, what are the steps that need to happen? Yeah, the first thing I would recommend for people to do is to visit lucidbooks.net forward slash get hyphen started, and that will just have some basic information. There's a short submission form. Um, you'll receive a partnership publishing guide for free, which just kind of explains more of, you know, who we are as a publishing company, uh, has, you know, testimonials of people that we've worked with in the past. Uh, and then I'll also put you in place, uh, in touch with a member of our team as well to talk through that process. Sounds great. Um, you also, uh, wrote on your blog, um, or actually I think someone else wrote about this. It was another writer that posted, um, the 11 steps uh, in getting your book published. And I was wondering if we could just touch on those 11, 11 different steps. They're, they're kind of more like, um, pieces of advice that you should do, um, to get started. Uh, let's start with, uh, the, of the 11, the first one is to determine your genre or audience. Can you talk for a moment about that? Yeah. And so, uh, touching on that maybe even earlier is yeah. the time you know, the genre, uh, your uh, title of your book, like the topic that you want to to write upon, you know, mm-hmm. and then the audience is, you know, thinking through, you know, who is your target audience? Like at the end of the day, who would benefit most from reading your book and thinking through who, you know, those people are, uh, you know, the demographics, you know, gender, economic status, where they spend time online. Mm-hmm. And so this will help, you know, people to think through, all right, this is the topic I want to write upon. Now, how can I write this in such a way that will best resonate with the people I think will benefit most from reading it at the end? Don't you agree that blogging helps a person de- determine the, who that audience is and helps them find the, that audience? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, sharing, you know, with whether it's publishing a book, blogging, you know, the, the first and foremost step is just creating great content. You know, because at the end, mm-hmm. great content is going to rise to the surface. Um, and that will, you know, create an audience around the content that you create. Uh, and yeah, and so if you're blogging this out ahead of time, you're going to get a good idea through, you know, your analytics, if you haven't set up on your website, to even engagement that you're receiving uh, through your social media channels to see if things are, you know, from whether it's being read um, and viewed online to whether it's being liked, uh, it's being shared, uh, to whether people are commenting on that, you know, on the blog post itself or maybe through your social media channels. And so, yeah, it's going to give somebody a great opportunity and idea of like, okay, this stuff is resonating with people or maybe this stuff isn't resonating with people or this is resonating, but I should maybe adapt or change it based upon the feedback that I'm receiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And another step that Lucid Books uh, talks about to get your book published is to read quality books, good quality books. Yeah. And I think this is really twofold is, you know, writers are readers, you know, at the end of the day. And, Mm -hmm. you know, Stephen King said, you know, along the lines of, you know, apart from writing in and of itself will help you become a good writer, but reading books will help somebody become a better, you know, writer to see how other people are writing. Mm -hmm. And for someone who's interested in writing, I think this really works in two ways. One, read broad, read general, you know, things that you like and have an interest in, whether it's fiction, you know, biographies, you know, history, business books, whatever that may be. And then two, uh, read books within your topic, within the niche that you want to write in to see how are other people communicating their ideas, you know. Uh, identify books that have done well, whether it's a bestsellers list or else, and seeing like, okay, what is it about their book that people resonated with? Are there potential, you know, look at the reviews that are there potential gaps that they miss or maybe, you know, positive things that people highlighted or negative things and to give mm-hmm. people ideas of like, okay, so if I want to write on this topic, I need to maybe include and fill this gap that was left or I need to steer clear of this type of, you know, Uh, style and tone, or maybe I need to emphasize these things that they did well. And so reading broadly and then specifically will help, you know, people interested in writing and publishing a book to get ready to write a book. 
which leads to the next step, which is to write. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like at the end, you just have you know write, write, write. You know, don't worry <laughs> about editing. You know, and don't worry about people looking at it. You know, just write for yourself. At the end of the day, you know. So you know, a lot of books start out with you know tens of thousands of words, and you know end up being you know fifty thousand manuscript, and somebody cut you know a hundred thousand words yeah. or fifty thousand words from it. So. Um, you know, but at the end, I think, yeah, just writing in of itself, you know, whether someone's blogging, uh, journaling, uh, or, you know, writing letters, or even look at emails as an opportunity to, to practice your writing. Uh, yeah. as, as silly that as it may seem is, mm -hmm. you know, that can really be, you know, as many emails that we send each and every single day, that can be a great opportunity to practice and hone your craft. Or maybe social media posts. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, trying to say things well within 140 characters or less, like on Twitter, like that's a really big challenge. Yeah. Uh, can't remember who wrote this, you know, years ago, um, you know, said something along the lines of sorry that my letter was so long. I didn't have the time to make it short. <laughs> right. I love that quote. I yeah. think that's Mark Twain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. remember. I was wanting to say somebody's name, but yes, yeah, so I just love that. And it resonated well. And I think that's, you know, really true is, you mm -hmm. know, is writing well, doesn't have to be verbose, you know, but getting that down to really, what do you want somebody to know and how do you want them to feel when reading it? And what are you trying to clearly communicate yeah. and sharing that? And, you know, as few as words possible is helpful, but a lot of times probably very similar to, you know, um, uh, with, uh, what am I looking for? Like, uh, sculpting, is that you start with a huge piece of rock and then you get rid of all the that you don't need to get to mm. that image, that sculpture that you're wanting to create. And so it's the same way I think with writing is, yeah. you, at least for me personally, I like to start with you know a lot and then work my way down to really get to what I'm trying to say. Yeah, love the sculpture analogy, beautiful. Um, another step to getting your book started is get professional help. And I'm curious if you recommend waiting until the entire manuscript is done to get professional op opinion. I should say opinion, excuse me, get professional opinions. Um, or should you just write the first chapter and then start getting opinions? What do you think? Yeah, no, I don't think it just really depends upon the individual. Uh, but I don't think at the end of the day that somebody needs to have written their entire manuscript before having a professional opinion. Mm -hmm. I think if you have, you know, the title, the topic that you're wanting to address, you know, a working table of contents, like, you know, these are the big ideas I want to hit, whether that's, you know, four, six, 10, 12 or more. And then I think really just having two chapters written uh, is sufficient enough to give people an idea of, of what you're about. But, okay. um, but I think it's important to definitely have a title and a table of contents, you know, as well. So that way to really to mm. review someone's content, mm -hmm. you want to kind of see one, the quality of the writing, but two, how, the, how will this fit into the topic of their book and how they want to say it? Cause you know, writing a book, yeah. you know, as, as much, you know, professionally is about editing, not only the line by line and making sure that something's grammatically correct, but everything's flowing well together from beginning to end. And that it helps, yeah. you know, reader, you know, from the beginning to read it, you know, engage him or her throughout the process and then really finish well. Yeah. So the TOC can help show how organized your plan is. Yeah, absolutely. And then just even having those couple of chapters written and ready for review is, I think, sufficient to help people just get started. I'm sure that helps, like, your chances of, of getting a publisher, right? I mean, as far as the more organized you are, because publishers, they may like your idea, but are they going to spend a lot of time, like, advising, you know, well, you should put this in there, or maybe you should do this. Does that Does that happen a lot, or...? Yeah, absolutely. For for our team, it does. Again, kind of going back to, you know, we really want to create a partnership with the author and his or her message. Mm -hmm. And so we have a director of publishing um, who also has a team of editors and writers along with her. And so, yes, yeah, so from the beginning in the middle and then to the end, you know, we're providing input to help, you know, the manuscript and the message to be as clear uh, as possible Mm -hmm. um, to be, you know, easily read. Um, so we're providing, uh, the line by line edits. We're providing content edits, just making sure everything's fitting uh, well together and connecting, um, as well as just other suggestions and stuff. So I think, uh, that's important, even though writing is a very personal thing, uh, in terms of way somebody wants to communicate and express him or herself through the written word, it's still very important to have a team of people together and to mm -hmm. help you really say your message well. Yeah, I'm sure that sounds reassuring, I think, for a lot of people to uh, to know that you're going to have a team of people kind of helping you out. Um, do you guys help 
the uh, aspiring author determine the commercial potential of the book? Yeah, so we'll walk through that as well and help them to do it. Um, and this is all just goes through the beginning. So we also help with the book uh, marketing and promotion aspects of it as well. And so we go through initial, you know, questionings, uh, uh, questions to help us assess like, all right, this is the title of the book. This is the audience, you know, where are they at, um, you know, online and stuff. How can we best target and connect with him or her uh, to do that? How can we, you know, there's three really facets of book marketing at the end of the day. And I believe this was from uh, Tim Grawl who wrote your first 1000 books, but he talks mm -hmm. about, you know, as an author, you want to sell as many copies of your book as possible to your audience. You want to equip your audience uh, to share your message of your book. So that mm -hmm. way, word of mouth, you know, is one of the most powerful means of you know, spreading the word about a book, if you know, any business for that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, but then three, you want to connect with people of influence who uh, are seen within your target audience, like who you want to read your book at the end to connect with you know, him or her or organizations who are also connected or speak into that. So if I'm a business uh, and I'm an entrepreneur, if I'm an entrepreneur and my book's on entrepreneurship, then, you know, you're looking probably like entrepreneur.com, you're looking at Inc., you're looking at, you know, Harvard Business Review. And then there's also, you know, hundreds, if not more of different business and entrepreneurial type of blogs from there um, that you'd want to try to connect with, whether it's writing guest blog posts or, maybe trying to obtain, I guess, interview on a podcast or whether it's a TV show or, I mean, you know, so the options are endless. Oh, wow. Great. So um, this ought to be a kind of a fascinating quick peek behind the curtain. You guys also help an aspiring blogger or excuse me, aspiring authors um, ask themselves, why do you want to be published? So yeah, yeah. How, how do you do that? Yeah. So, I mean, that's one of the questions and that helps us, you know, on, you know, publishing side is that's one of the questions on our submission form is, you know, what's your goal with publishing? Um, because, you know, with, with publishing houses, it really depends, you know, not every author is a good fit for every publishing house. Mm -hmm. And so it just helps us to understand, you know, what is somebody's objective? What is their goal, you know, behind the book? And so that also helps us to assess it on you know, our side, especially when we're talking about marketability you know, some people just have an interest in writing a book and they, you know, maybe want it for family and friends or just to give it away as, as gifts. And that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, you know, it's good to know those type of things up front or, you know, someone's interested in like growing a business. And it's like, so when we're taking it in, just knowing somebody's motivation at the beginning helps us understand how to, you know, assess, you know, his or her, you know, manuscript and the objectives behind their book and to see really, are, okay, are we going to be a good fit? to help you accomplish your goals as an author. And, you know, sometimes that's the case and sometimes it's not. Do you ever like tell people, Hey, you know, you, you say you don't care about profit right now or making income, but actually we think this could make a really good income stream for you. I mean, do you ever tell people that? Yeah. So, you know, had conversations with you know, many authors in terms of, you know, especially for business authors is looking at your book and helping them see the bigger picture of, you know, this is more than just about your book. There's a lot of potential here to generate and create multiple streams of revenue for you and your business. And so instead of maybe looking at the individual tree is really backing out and seeing the forest and like, wow, there's really all these different uh, pieces and parts that it can influence. And I think there's, you know, we've had some helpful conversations there and uh, helping authors take a step back, see a bigger picture and how they can use his or her book you know, to reach, you know, the people that will not only benefit from the book that they're writing, but right. could also maybe even benefit from additional products and services, you know, that they offer. Right. Um, you guys help people then uh, build their readership. Is that right? Yeah. So it really depends on, you know, the goal of the author. We have, uh, we work with some authors who may be just getting started on the front end. And so we have the ability to provide, you know, some support and coaching uh, and consulting on the front end to help, you know, him or her develop, you know, audience to hone their craft and stuff. You know, other authors we work with have, you know, maybe been blogging for several years now. And so it's just more or less talking and working with them into thinking through, you know, here's your, you know, your blogging strategy, your social media strategy. How can you really work everything together over the next, you know, nine, six, three months uh, or one month to help prepare people, you know, your audience to, you know, compel them to purchase your book and to even share it, you know, with his or her audience and network. Right. And once again, don't you think a blog might help with this? 
<laughs> no, absolutely. So no blogging, like, I mean, you know, blogging before publishing a book is one of the best things people can do uh, to get noticed in a you know busy world. And so some authors, not many, have the luxury of, you know, going to the secluded cabin in the woods and writing and publishing a book and people will mm-hmm. buy it because, you know, they have brain recognition or they've been publishing, you know, for years. But for first time authors or uh, authors that don't currently have some sort of maybe like national or regional recognition, mm-hmm. um, then the best thing is to start, you know, blogging and, you know, sharing your message, you know, as far in advance as you possibly can. Uh, Seth Godin's advice for first time authors is like, you know, you should start three years in advance, you know, mm-hmm. sharing your message and getting your word out there before, you know, right. you publish a book. Um, and right. I don't know if that's like a hard, you know, and fast three year rule for him. I don't think that's the case personally. Um, but I think if somebody's wanting to publish a book and their goal and objective is, you know, for people to read it and to buy it, then, you know, the first reason that people typically buy books is because of the author. Like, you know, who do I know the author? You know, am mm-hmm. I connected with the author? Um, you know, so for some authors, when they publish their book, people are going to buy it because it's a Stephen King or James Patterson or, or whoever. But, you know, first time or aspiring authors who might not have a lot of connections at first because they may not have that recognition, you know, regionally, nationally, whatever it may be, right. then, you know, they need to start building that audience up and around that. And so that will help them, you know, create the audience via blogging to have people in place who are then ready to purchase the book. Yeah, this is sounding exciting. So what about then another step, which is setting goals? Yeah. And so I think that's one of the, that's one of the first questions I like to ask authors, authors is, you know, what, what is your goal for publishing your book? And so it's important to identify, you know, if somebody like, I would like to sell 500 or a thousand copies or 10,000 copies or whatever that is. So it's identifying like, all right, here's the number of books they would like to sell. And here's the date that we'd like to sell that by. And so it's then working with the author to help them identify a strategy to put that together to hit that goal. But that's also not the only goal, you know, some of the goals is, you know, I just want to establish myself as a credible um, expert in this field so that I can enhance my speaking uh, engagement. And so it's working mm-hmm. with them to do that. Or, you know, hey, with publishing this book, a secondary goal of mine is I'd like to generate, you know, 500 or 1,000 or, you know, 5,000 more email opt-ins. And so as we're looking at that, it's like, okay, now how can we position the book, your website, and other things you're doing to help you reach, you know, those secondary or or tertiary goals? And so it's just really, you know, breaking it down and and working with the author. And so all the goals are, you know, going to change and and adapt. You know, this could even be for nonprofit, you know, leaders. So nonprofit leaders who are interested in creating awareness for the cause they believe in and the organization that they're behind is – hey, through writing and publishing this book, I'd really like to create more awareness through this and look to generate um, more, you know, donations and stuff on a monthly or or annual. So it just really depends on the author, uh, the objectives that they have, and then how does a book fit within that to help them reach their objectives. Right. Now, Jesse, you also advise uh, aspiring authors to research publishers. So, um, and feel free to go ahead and talk about you know, what makes Lucid a good fit for an author? Yeah, so the, I think the things that make Lucid a good fit for authors is that, you know, at the end, our primary goal is, you know, we built a company, and in particular, Casey Sees, the CEO and founder of Lucid Books, uh, you know, to partner with authors to create that experience. Um, the company was started with a conversation, and he had with a friend who had a terrible self-publishing experience. And so the concept is like, you know, he didn't get help, he didn't feel supported, wasn't guided, and he wasn't impressed with the quality of the book after it was done. And we're talking several years ago. And so it was like, well, how can we create a business model or publishing model, in particular Casey, to to work and partner with authors that they feel valued in the process, in the creative process, so they're able to give feedback into the direction, the creative direction of the book, from the book cover and the layout, back cover design. Um, They have, you know, involvement in the manuscript itself and that they also feel valued during the the marketing process. So we, you know, talked with, you know, traditionally published authors and work with them in that, you know, one in particular stands out that, you know, he didn't feel valued or supported well when he had a speaking engagement and he needed, you know, some bandwidth there and didn't feel valued in that. And so, you know, we're able to come along authors in situations like that is like, you know, they don't have to publish a book and then they're done in three months if it doesn't hit and do well. We can work with authors and help them relaunch books and we can help them think and find new creative ways to reach out. And so we really want to provide that personal 
touch with authors. So we are, you know, purposefully keeping ourselves you know, smaller in a, in a boutique sense. That way we can provide that personal, you know, one-on-one and group, you know, coaching and stuff for authors and, you know, to set ourselves apart. Okay. So how does an aspiring author prepare their materials for submission? Yeah. So the easiest thing to do is go to lucidbooks.net forward slash get hyphen started. And, you know, from there they can just fill out the, um, there's just a few questions, name, contact information. And then, you know, from there, that's, you know, really about it. And that helps us to start just a conversation. And so there's nothing in terms of, they don't have to go through a particular process to get things ready and stuff at the moment. Uh, But once we start those conversations and start assessing like, Hey, is this a good fit for us and a good fit for you? And then we'll look through, you know, submitting if they have a few chapters ready or some authors have a mm-hmm. complete manuscript ready. And then some authors we talk to, they just have a book idea and they just, you know, are, are interested in publishing a book, but they really need help at the beginning and just thinking through like, you know, the book topic and their audience and how they want to say their message and stuff. So it just really yeah. depends. Okay. Yeah. I was, I was curious if they needed to submit something initially or not. Okay. That, that sounds good. Um, and then finally you advise people to, uh, be okay with rejection. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I think, you know, and this kind of goes back to the fear of writing is, you know, is just being okay with the fear of rejection. And, and it doesn't mean not, not being rejected from publishing a book, but in terms of, you know, getting a book published, it can take, you know, uh, many authors, you know, have an experience of being rejected, you know, dozens of times before they find a publisher working with them. So I think it's kind of understanding it's competitive to have a book published, and, but mm-hmm. to go in with the right expectations of like, you know, whether you're trying to produce, you know, pursue traditional publishing, whether you're looking for a lucid books, like a hybrid partnership publishing type of model or what, that to go in with the right expectations that, you know, there is a chance that I'm going to be rejected from several people, but that doesn't mean anything against you know, the author or his or her manuscript. It just means like finding the right publishing house yeah. who will get behind you know, him or her and her message. And so there's many authors who have been, there's countless stories out there of people who were you know, denied you know, mm-hmm. multiple times from publishers and then who end up being you know, your Stephen Kings or who end up going writing New York Times bestsellers. So because at the end, it's, it's not necessarily about the author and the manuscript, it's just about finding that right fit with the author, the manuscript, and the publishing house. Great. So you've, you've uh, provided a lot of really cool and helpful information on becoming a published author. And I want to now close, Jesse, with a couple of more personal questions for you. Sure. Um, yeah, so you have been a blogger for several years now, even before working with Lucid, and you are actually a published author yourself. So how has your experience been as far as work, you know, being a blogger, being an author and how those two things have worked together for you. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I just stumbled into blogging, man, I'm trying to think when that originally was helping out a friend of mine, uh, with the organization he was leading and providing, you know, blog posts and resources and stuff. Yeah. I I think when, I think when I started following you a few years ago, you were freelance, uh, copywriting. Yeah, I didn't do a lot of, I didn't, um, I've done some freelance uh, writing and uh, I've been also, you know, provide freelance in terms of content strategy management and stuff. So um, mm-hmm. I guess even going back to several years, so the book I wrote was published in 2011 and I don't think anybody other than, you know, maybe family and friends bought it and that's okay. I just wanted to write the book at the end of the day. <laughs> but yeah. the book in and of itself, even though the goal wasn't really to generate revenue, it actually ended up, you know, opening the door for new professional opportunities. And so, you know, soon after that, several months later, I was able to, to come on board at a nonprofit organization um, with a church and to serve as like a content strategist and writer uh, for them. And writing that book, even though I didn't know at the time, you know, proved um, as a credible resource, you know, to, to help myself get into that, which has now then paved the way into, you know, being in the publishing industry today. Hmm. A- absolutely. So, okay, this is the closing question now. And... Uh, this is a, the question that I ask every guest, every guest this. Jesse, um, how has blogging and being an author, I'm going to throw in being an author in this particular case, how, are, how have these two things changed your life? Yeah, I would say completely. Uh, again, going back to when I was interested in writing a book back in 2010, 2011, you know, I didn't know what I was getting into. I just had an interest in writing on a particular topic, and, and so I did, and had it published. But I didn't foresee how it would end up changing my life. 
in that, you know, especially in a professional sense, in that it opened up new professional uh, career opportunities for me. It's led to, you know, writing, uh, rather blogging, as well as you know, publishing a book. It's led to multiple contract opportunities and providing, you know, writing blog posts for organizations or even providing content management solutions for others. Um, but then most importantly, you know, it's even led to the work that I'm doing today. And so, you know, here I am five, six years later in the publishing industry, going back as a teenager who, you know, failed English and then as a college student who had to take remedial English classes and then as a budding graduate student who had to take remedial writing, you know, who has now then led into, you know, working in the publishing industry itself. And so it's just, you know, it's definitely not the path that I would look back on of like where I was at, but now I'm, you know, very thankful for what I'm doing and writing blogging and um, publishing a book has made all the difference. Jesse, how can people get in touch with you or follow you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, best place is I write uh, regularly on lucidbooks.net on Twitter. I'm more active there than I am on Facebook and that's at the Jesse W. Mm -hmm. So I tend to share a lot on publishing, content marketing and, and marketing strategy and that. But um, I would say those are the two best places. And then I have a website, the Jesse W.com, but I'm not regularly, you know, writing and stuff there. But if they do go there, they can download a free ebook on effective content uh, creation. Fabulous. Just let everyone know I will be linking to all of these things Jesse just mentioned down in the show notes. Well, thanks for coming on the Blog Chronicles today, Jesse. Hey, you're welcome, Matt. Thanks for the opportunity and glad to talk with you and your audience and about writing and publishing. Yeah, this has been super fun. Encouraging, too. Absolutely. And when you're ready to uh, publish your book, you just let me know. Actually, I'd like to talk to you off the air about that. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Take care. Excellent. Thanks, Matt. You too. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Blog Chronicles. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe on YouTube or iTunes and leave a rating or review to help other bloggers find us. If you want to chat, look me up on Twitter at Matt Loomis. In the next episode, we'll be talking with online marketing expert Catherine Kotaw, CEO of Kotaw Content Marketing, on the importance of telling your story and selling your story to grow a huge blog audience. Are you sharing your story in ways that connect and motivate the right audience? Or are you producing blog content that isn't connecting with your target audience? Find out how to fix that on the next episode of the Blog Chronicles. <laughs>